Blackbusters. What's cracking with a family, man? Welcome back to Blackbusters, the best movie review podcast in the world. In the world, Craig. In the world, Craig. In the world. In the world. Hey, <laughs> boy, yeah. Craig. I'm your host, Big Ja, mm-hmm. along with my co host. This is Cold Tone. Cold Tone. Get those chains off the doors. The enemy Ooh. is here. Cold Tone. Go, Cold, Cold, Cold tone. tone. Cold Tone. Get those chains off the doors. The enemy is here. The enemy is here. <laughs> Hey, man, uh, y'all probably wondering, like, what is he talking about? Mm-hmm. That's a, a, a quote from a movie that we're about to discuss today, and it is Lean On Me. Lean On Me. We are doing Lean On Me, man. Um, we had a conversation a few weeks back, and this this movie popped up in your con- in the conversation. Mm-hmm. You brought it up, and I'm like, mm-hmm. bro, we got to do Lean On Me. We got to snatch that up. Whatever we was going to do the next week and the next week and the next week, we got to do this one. I love so this we, movie. We got, hey, bro. I love this movie. And, and and the hard part is this movie came out in 1989. 89. Man. That's how so old Morgan Freeman ago. is. He was old in he that movie. He was old in this movie, man. <laughs> hey, man. My, my, uh, Morgan Freeman was an old 10-year-old. Yeah. Hey, I wonder if at 10 years old, he had to look probably 26. But you know what's interesting, Ja, is that like black men especially have aged differently mm-hmm. Like, for all we know, Morgan Freeman was 40 when he played Joe Clark. Yeah. But, like, 40 in 89 and 40 in 2023 are totally different. Uh, why is that? I think because them niggas didn't, sh- like, shave their head. Like, right. like, like if we, if you and me weren't committed to being bald, we'd have Man, that hip George I'll Jefferson. be out here. <laughs> I'll be out here. <laughs> George. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be out here Uncle Phillin, my yeah, nigga. Exactly. Hey, bro. Yeah. I'll be out here getting my uh yeah. my Carl Winslow on. Eating beans and rice. Man. You know what I mean? Just on a regular basis. Yeah. yeah. I just think I just think like they age different. I think they had less choices in terms of clothing. Right. So just it was all like, you know, like that outfit, that outfit that, that Morgan Freeman that Joe Clark is wearing in this movie was like the the 40 year old man outfit. Every, yeah. Everybody went to Sears, hard and makeup, and he, yeah, you know. Yeah. So I just think there's just a different flair. But even in '89, Morgan Freeman was an established <laughs> elder gentleman. So in ni- he was born in 1937, right? Oh, damn. So he's a he was born a day a year ahead of my dad. Mm-hmm. My dad was born in 1938. Mm-hmm. My dad had me in 1981 at yeah. 44. Shh. So I mean, he was 45 when he did in 1981. Movie. No, 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 no. Mm-hmm. He was 45 in 1981. Damn. Because my dad was 44 in 1981 when I was born. That means seven. So so eight years later, mm-hmm. Damn. he was 50. <laughs> he was 50. So wow. He was, he was 53. 52, 53. Damn. Nigga. At 80. Woo. Yeah, so he really has been old forever. This nigga been old forever, bro. He's been old forever. Because the movie starts off. All right, so this movie, like the, with the young me, old man, <laughs> it, it, yeah, yeah, hilarious. Uh, the movie is set in 1987, mm-hmm. right? And he comes back to uh, Morgan Freeman. Uh, this movie is uh, starring Morgan Freeman and um, as Joe Clark, as Joe Clark, as well as um, Robert Guillaume, yeah, uh, Beverly Todd, Alan North. You got you um, got Michael, Michael Beach. Beach. Michael Beach with the, with, with, Beach. The, with the with the with the legendary table flip. Yeah, that's man. That's this is his villain origin story. Yeah, <laughs> this is this what he changed. Right, this, this is what, what he changed. changed. Yeah, because he was kind of innocent. Yeah, he was a good guy. He was a good. I was just picking up a piece of paper. <laughs> trash. See, I'm just picking garbage. up garbage. It's trash. Man, Give me the goddamn respect that I deserve, man. Yeah, that yeah. you would that, that, that you would damn sure respect yourself. Yeah, I'll kick your black ass, nigga. <laughs> he was in there. He kept it a hundred. He, he kept it a buck, bro. He I said, if you don't dis- keep disrespecting me, bro, I'm a, I'm gonna fuck you up. Yeah, I'm gonna fuck you up. <laughs> <laughs> That's essentially what but he said. But if y'all hear the thing, 1989. I don't know who's watching <laughs> this. I don't know. Uh, y'all might be. 25 years old, y'all might be 35, 45. If you're 35, you might have run across it, crossed it. If you're 45, you for sure saw this movie. Yes. If you're 55, you for sure saw this movie. Yes. So, uh, but for those who haven't seen this film or haven't seen it in a long time, please go check it out. Yeah. It's a great film. It's man. aged well. It aged so it well. It is aged extremely well. well. Yes, sir. Super um, good. The writing is so dope. So, but, and we're making jokes about Mr. Darnell's character, uh, mm-hmm. Michael Beach. Uh, 
he gets pissed off because Morgan Freeman, the Joe Clark is talking crazy. Listen, man. I've never <laughs> seen a principal yeah. talk so reckless. Yeah, yeah. With with such good intentions. Man. But was so reckless. Though. Like, like those were one of my notes. Like, how many times I would have quit. Oh, man. Right? I probably would slap <laughs> Joe Clark. <laughs> Joe. And regret it later on. Mm-hmm. I would have regretted it later on because it was for the greater good. Yeah. I did his delivery. But he just, like, no fucks given at all. Like, at all. Like, he was, Joe was on 10 all the time. And it's interesting because it, like, I'm comparing, like, I'm watching it now. And this movie is aged great, mm-hmm. like, except for, like, no uh, boss is allowed to be that abusive. Yeah, 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 anymore, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Like he's like, not getting out of the week. He's yeah. not being. He's not gonna. They're they gonna write his ass up so right. quick, right? Mm-hmm. So, so you just can't get down like that no more. But like the heavy-handed approach to education versus like the soft palm apo- approach yeah, to education. The coach, the, yeah. the, the, uh, the student teacher. Yeah. Nah. Like I think I'm part of the friend, reason why bro. the schools are kind of fucked up is because we went away from yeah. that, that, that yeah. Joe Clark, you know, holding niggas accountable, but uh, he was fantastic. Why was he banging on the teachers Man. so hard that they were so kids. hard? Listen, when he had Candyman as his head of security, that's <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah, this is legit. Joe Clark <laughs> said they used to call me Crazy Joe. Yeah. Now you can call me Batman. Yeah. And he had Candyman at Tony as, Todd, head, of, as, as head, head of security, of security bro. Yeah. When, it, when when Handyman's your head of, when Candyman's your head of security, you there about that business. Hey, so let me just say, all right, so Joe Clark is set in 87. Mm-hmm. But really, really, the the begin the first scene, which I forgot, bro. Yeah, I forgot about the first scene. The early, the Afro, the, the di- nineteen sixty seven the, the East Side High. Yeah, uh, Joe Clark was a teacher. He wasn't a principal. He was mm-hmm. a teacher. And it was twenty years before, mm-hmm. and it, the story starts in nineteen sixty seven. He's a teacher at East Side High, and it's a predominantly white school. Yeah, all white. Damn, makes there. sense. And he's he got an Afro and, and a daishiki, mm-hmm. and he's teaching these white kids. Dope, at, and he's kind of adding in his curriculum with yeah. with the standard curriculum, right? And they love him. Yeah, he uh, they love him as a teacher. He's engaging. Yeah, you know, he's leaned in. Yes, you know, he's, he's tough still. He, he's st- still still mm-hmm. tough, but yeah. like just a great, passionate teacher. Right, That's and you a- can tell the white kids love him. Yeah. And, and, and he's teaching them stuff about, and you see like Black History, well, Malcolm X in you the background, you see Malcolm X yeah. on the wall and stuff Black like that, blended stuff. Yeah. So yeah, yeah. So he was basically, you know, how a lot of us were raised in the, in, in in America. Um, we we were we were we were we were, we were taught American culture, mm-hmm. not Black American mm-hmm. culture, or not African history. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? We weren't we, American history is what we were taught. He was teaching them both. Yeah. He was like teaching these white kids, y'all need to know everything. Mm-hmm. Us, America, Africa, everything, and you un- and unionizing on the side. Yeah, like not only was he was he teaching in the classroom, he was trying to build a union. Yeah, you know. Yeah, they railroaded his ass, but yeah. And so the movie, the beginning of the movie, starts off with them basically changing things up and basically kicking him out. Yeah, of the of the of the of the school, and wanting to send him somewhere else. Mm-hmm. So they, and they that's what they did. Send him to the burbs. They sent him to the burbs. And they sent him to like elementary. He's a principal at an elementary school. Yeah, yeah. Where, where, where you can. Here's the thing. Depend his type of man, mm-hmm. the type of man he was, he was a better fit to to uh, engage older kids. Mm-hmm. Of course, young kids at five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, very Im- impressionable. Yeah, and you can do good, but you can do good at eight, five, six, seven, and eight. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the, that age group, and yeah. they could end up still being bad apples. And he was still special. I mean, we get introduced to the character Kamisha later, mm-hmm. and she, in, in, you know, she's at Eastside High at, the, she, at the present, but she remembers him. When she was like 10 years old, 8 and, years and, old. And he was my elementary school principal. Yes. Right? Yes. So, like, so, so he was still... He was still... Influential, and he was still disrespecting the staff. Yeah, because yeah. even even with, with with Dr. Napier yeah. and the guy, hey. <laughs> but when he stood, he, he stood up on the on the table. Yeah, Woo. in front of the uh, yeah. this is in 19, 1967. And, and put a dollar on that man's on, forehead. on his forehead and yeah. walked out mm-hmm. and quit. Yep, and walked out. He didn't even go get his bags from yep. his job from from his mm-hmm. classroom. Let you know what kind of man he is. Yeah, he, he's out of there, and yep. that hardened him. Yep, that hardened him so much to where. Twenty years later, mm-hmm. the same uh, his his same buddy, uh, Doctor Napier, Dr. Napier uh, uh, Robert Guillaume, mm-hmm. he came back 
and say, bro, we need you back at Eastside High. Yeah. I know they, I know they, I know they fired you mm -hmm. twenty years ago. We need you back because the school is in shambles. Dr. Napier is a real one. Super real one. Dr. And that's what I love. <laughs> and, 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 yeah. and how and how they how they how they show these black men yeah. in, in the white society. Mm -hmm. They were the same um Issa High in 1967 as yep. they were in 87. Yep. They were they were they were true to each other, they were loyal to each other, mm -hmm. and they were hard mm -hmm. to each other. And they were real, real. With, with each other. Yeah. So Very and, and real. they show how Two black men can argue to the point where they raise their voices almost to you damn it gonna fist fight. Yeah. Cause the way they was yelling at each other, it was almost like I'll, I'll fire on you, bro. Yeah. But when it's all said and done, the respect and the love was there, and they also were there for the greater good. That's what was great about their relationship. Because it was obvious that they had history, mm -hmm. obvious that they had respect for one another, mm -hmm. right? And Napier is like, I'm not like one of your little friends. Or you your little, you not, you not about to talk to me, no kind of way, mm -hmm. because Napier let his ass have it, man. <laughs> like bro. you ain't, you ain't shit. You ain't never been shit. You ain't never done shit. That's a, all you do is talk. I done, I but, got an opportunity to put you back in the game, and you talking shit. And you, what you, what you gonna do? He says everything you've done in your life mm -hmm. has amounted to nothing. Yeah. And so, <laughs> and neither is mine. Yeah. And walked off. And walked off. So he was like, so at first he was like, he's dissing them. Like, bro, we, mm -hmm. you, 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 you want to make a mark in this world, but you haven't yet. Yeah. And neither have I. I'm giving you opportunity to make a mark with me, bro. Let's do this. Yeah. Let's get back to this high school because the high school was in terrible condition. From in 20 years, it went from an all white school mm -hmm. to a predominantly black and Spanish school. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And it's graffiti everywhere. They're breaking windows. There's fights. There's gangs. Mm -hmm. There's drug infested. We got freshmen smoking crack. Yeah. We got everybody smoking cigarettes. The teachers are afraid of of, the, of, of talking to the kids. They getting beat up. Yeah. One of the teachers tried to stop a fight, and they Man. beat the fuck out they, of him. They smashed his head into they, the concrete. They busted. They cracked his head open. Mm -hmm. And this is the teacher. So a lot of yeah. times, teachers don't want to get involved because they might lose their life. Yeah. All yeah. they all their faculties. The set was so fucked up. I'm um, like, damn, this is like <laughs> fucking like like somebody yeah. like hired our director. They was like, just fuck this place, man. Up. Yeah, like, yeah. Uh, what's the um? It's this Sin City, man. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. yeah. And here, now, mind you, I've been to some some bad schools. Mm -hmm. Never, nothing as bad as that. But we had we had graffiti on the walls. Yeah. We yeah. had we had fights all the time. But it was like, nah, we had some bad schools. Mm -hmm. We had some bad, but was nobody smoking crack. Yeah, they was. I mean. They but, was, but then this is the 80s. Yeah. And it's so, the 80s. I mean, they they had like Suitcase Brother come in and he opened up the case and it was like a vending machine. A vending machine. <laughs> of, of drugs. Like a candy store. Of candy this, store. What you want, man. Machines. And that's the East Side High that, um, that Mr. Clark, you know, walks into. And he sets the tone very early from... From before we get to, we get to the auditorium, which is a great fucking yeah, yeah. scene. But when they walk in, everybody's all happy to meet them. They're all like, you know, stay. Hey, Hi, Mr. We've Hart. heard about you. We've heard about you. Mm -hmm. He was like, sit down. <laughs> Shut up. Right? Yeah. Like, you know, and just ran like, you know, they, they can't read. <laughs> right? Like, yeah, he, you know, he in their face. He in their face. They can't read. Yeah. That um, I'm the H N I C, and he didn't even explain what it meant. He just said it. <laughs> yeah. Got up out of there. But so they they wanted him to come back to the school because the school was in, in such bad this uh mm -hmm. some such bad shape. Yep. The uh there you know there's a test every the, year that the basic uh, minimum skills the test. minimum minimum skills test yeah, minimum is seventy five percent or more. Mm -hmm. Right, and uh, uh Eastside High was performing at 38%. Like 38%. 38%. And if, and if they don't get above 75%, the state is going to take, take over the school. Th yeah. So they bring Joe Clark in to try to get those test scores in less above. Than a year. In less than a year. It's about 10 months, man. Yeah, so that they can, you know, maintain control of, of, the, school. of the school. They're about to lose. The, and the mayor the can have that. The mayor, it looks bad on the mayor mm -hmm. if his schools are being taken from yep. the city. Yep. So, so that's why like, they bring in Joe. So he allows uh, Dr. Napier. He said, I got a guy. Mm -hmm. And he's like, nah, man, we can't get this guy. This guy's a, a knucklehead. Yeah. Man, yeah. We, saw what he, we saw what he did 10, 20 years ago. Mm -hmm. He like, bro, if you want to get this school back, if you want to keep this school, 
Let me bring Joe Clark He's in. the guy. So Joe Clark came in already knowing you. I'm coming to save the day. Yeah, yeah. So he got swagger, he got intention, and mm-hmm. he has a, a no nonsense um, understanding and in, in, in way about him to where he's like, "Hey, bro, I don't want to hear nobody say nothing." Yeah. He says he, he walked into that room, the the, the faculty meeting mm-hmm. with the with the whole staff from like the kitchen yeah. to the teachers, the PE teachers, and the, the security. Mm-hmm. He said, "This is what it is. Don't nobody talk in my meetings." Yep. I am the only one that talks on my meetings. Mm-hmm. And he's just grown ass teachers. Grown ass teachers. They've been there for years. Yes. He said, no one talks in my in my class. It's not my, a democracy. It's not a democracy. Mm-hmm. I'm the HNIC. Yeah. He was like, you, um, Mr. Such and Such, uh, you Mr. The, Mr. Johnson. You the new football coach. You the new football coach. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> head coach? Yeah. You demoted to assistant head coach. Mm-hmm. All right. Tired of us leaving. Losing. Yeah, tired of, yeah, be losing. So mm-hmm. here's the thing. And he 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 basically told them, I don't care what you guys have to say. Yeah. One guy was like, We'll let you know some of our, our trouble situations mm-hmm. or some of our issues with the uh with the staff or with how things are working here. He said, I don't care about none of that. Yeah. Everything is changing anyhow. Yeah. I'm here now. Yep. So whatever y'all was doing before, y'all not doing no more. Mm-hmm. And that's what you do. I remember being in college, right? And um my my junior year, we was one in ten. Mm-hmm. We was 0 in ten for the whole season. It was the 90 year, 9-11 year. Yep. We was 0-10, and, and then we played Rutgers. That's crazy. New Jersey. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm uh, East Ohio was in Jersey. Yeah. We played Rutgers, and we beat them. They was 2-8, and, eight, and yep. we was um, um we was 1-10, and, and we beat them. to make it, We was 0-10 to become 1-10. And, mm-hmm. and the next year, we got a whole new coach, yep. a whole new staff. He came in, cut niggas. Niggas, whoever was starting, mm-hmm. you ain't starting no more. He's doing what Deion Sanders is doing right now mm-hmm. when he came to Buffalo, because yep. I guess Buffalo was super whack, right? Mm-hmm. So, coaches, y'all can play. I don't care. Players, if y'all don't complain about not playing, yep. y'all was playing last year and y'all was losing. So, yeah. So, at this it's point, a, a new East day. High is even now, they're in the bad. Y'all, y'all, this is the shitty-ass school. It's yeah. like the streets. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's drugs everywhere. So, I don't care what y'all say. My, my way is law, yeah. and that's what it is. He basically said, if y'all knew how to run a school, I wouldn't be here. Right. That's exactly what he said. <laughs> That's exactly what he said. Right. right. So whatever you got planned or in store, I'm not interested. Here's what we doing. Give me the names of everybody. That's a that's a miscreant drug dealer, such and such. I don't want it by noon. By noon on my desk by noon. By noon. That's the morning. <laughs> on his first day. He was like, yeah. And if you don't like it, quit. Yep. Boom. If you don't like it, quit. Put them fools in check. And then got the list. Man, I love that scene. They got all them kids on the stage. Everybody in the whole auditorium is wilding. Chilling. <laughs> Running crazy. They smoking. Everybody blazing. They blazing. Mm-hmm. They had the little whore come down the aisle. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, you the, know, so, the sultry walk. Yeah. You know, like, yeah. like you know, she's turning tricks in the, in the bathroom. Yeah. Um, And uh, he went up there and, and kicked everybody out. And it was and it was just like okay, here we go. And, and that got the that got the rest of the class, the rest of the school. It's twenty seven hundred kids. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. He uh, he got rid of three hundred, so it was three thousand kids at this yeah. school. It's a yeah. big school. Yeah. I'm getting rid of three three hundred kids. Yeah, and he, he to their face security escort these kids off the premises. They don't they don't they no longer come here. And security they no longer attend this school. I don't know if you saw this, but like security like licked their chops. Yeah. <laughs> They yeah. was like, hell yeah. yeah. We about this action. Yeah. And Candyman was yeah. with it. Candy- Candyman was, <laughs> was like, bro, I finally got a principal that's going to hold me down because I'm about to start acting up. I love it. I I'm love about it. To start acting up. I love it. It's and, so and subtle. The biggest, and, the, and like the toughest, roughest yeah. um, uh, drug dealer, mm-hmm. uh, Candyman. Snatched him up, Snatched yoked him, him up. up, yoked him was up. Like, he probably was like, "Man, if I do this, I'm, I I might get in trouble. So mm-hmm. let me not do it." But but, but once Clark got there, mm-hmm. oh, oh he oh yeah. Listen, it, that it might have in terms of screen time, it might have been a second, maybe half a second. But you could see the glee on his face. Yes, <laughs> you saw Candyman. You saw Candyman. He, I was, he was like, "Whoa!" He was yeah. like, "Hell yeah!" Because before he was an underling, he mm-hmm. was like a deputy almost. Yep. yep. So when Joe Clark got there, he appointed him. You're head of security. Mm-hmm. I mean, you're the boss now. Mm-hmm. So you can hire who you want to hire. You can bring in who you want to bring in, and then you can you, and you run the show as far as security. Yep. And so he he probably got his homies. Mm-hmm. He probably was like, "Hey, bro." Um, those that got fired before are now hired again. Yep. He, I need about 15 of y'all. Come back to the school tomorrow. He's the only one I never saw Joe Clark flash on. 
Hey, when it's all, <laughs> hey, when it's all said and done, you yeah. right. Like he never banged Joe, on Joe Joe Clark man. banged on everybody unnecessarily, unnecessarily. But you never saw him speak even when things didn't go right. You know, like even like when like how did how did he get in? Like you know, um, somebody must open the door. He still never said, "Well, it's your job to keep the, yeah. the doors locked." You know what I mean? Like yeah, he, he knew better. He might be like, yeah, yeah, candy man, yo, Professor Cl- oh, Mr. Clark. Yeah. Come on now. Yeah, <laughs> I understand how you how you you high tempered. Mm-hmm. I'm but not I, Michael Beach. But I, I, I ain't Michael Beach. <laughs> I'll flip you. I'll beat the brakes off you, bro. <laughs> Michael, and, and Candyman back then was about 38. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and Joe Clark about 50, 52. Yeah. Oh, I'll man. slam you in your neck, bro. Chill. Yeah. yeah. Chill. And I think, I think That's so funny. Joe Clark knew. He yeah. knew. Yeah. I ain't going to press this nigga's line with him. at all. <laughs> um, That's so crazy. That's funny. Yeah, man. So he came in and immedi- immediately set the tone first day. Yeah. Um, he kicked the kid. He had all, all he had a, 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 a in the auditorium. He had like a meeting for all the kids had to come, mm-hmm. and he kicked the three hundred kids off stage. Yeah, and that caused an uproar with the city, yeah. with the neighborhood, yeah. the parents. Um, some of the parents came to the parent teacher, like the the the, the, the it was a, the the committee, the uh, like it was probably like a school board meeting, school board meeting, local school board, local meeting. local school board meeting. We got parents there who are upset, and yeah. some parents are happy yeah. that the riff raff got kicked out. Where we first get introduced, yeah, to 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 sister uh, Leona Barrett, Miss Barrett, sister Barrett. Yeah. So so before we, when we were talking off camera, you had a very interesting question. Like, did Miss Barrett have any? Kids that went because to school. Because she represented the parents. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. And I'm like, she was just a parent. Yeah. That was, that was upset with the way he was doing things. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, she said, how dare you kick 300 kids? These are kids. You mm-hmm. kicked them out of the school. Mm-hmm. He said, nah, they, these are kids, but they miscreants. Yeah. And they criminals. And they whores and pimps. And they, yeah. and they, they deserve to be gone. Yeah. And if, uh, and he went, and he didn't, and he stood on that. Yeah, he doubled down on he it. He did not, nah. He did not back off um, at all. So I'm wondering to myself, like, why is she so mad? Yeah, why is she so mad? Did yeah. you have a kid that went there that got kicked out? And if so, maybe you should be mad at yourself yeah. for having that type of child in, in in the high school. I'm like you. I always thought she was a politician too. I did this whole time. This whole time. I and then the rewatch, but like she's just a, a parent. And I don't even, and we don't even know if she's a parent because she never make they never make mention of her child. She never says my child, mm-hmm. right? Like, and there's no other mention throughout the movie of getting her kid back in or right. where her kid was. So I think she's just a kind of a, a troublemaking local, maybe a, a politically aspirational. I mean, she goes from the from from the the whatever room they were in, uh-huh. you know, to sitting on on the board with the gavel yeah, or yeah. next to the gavel so so she climbed the ladder she did in in those 10 months and, yeah in in those 10 months uh-huh. what i love about that scene there's so many things i love about that scene uh i love the overacting of the crowd when they was getting mad and shit like that mm-hmm. like some, so if you relook oh. at it this extra is going hard and yeah. i love i love the whoever's like throwing there's like one guy that's throwing these like side piece remarks like, you know, like, my kid ain't no deviant, right? <laughs> like, like, just hey, he probably is. Because he's yelling out just like you do yeah. in class. Yeah. <laughs> like, that guy. Uh, so, so, so we're going to church now? Right? Like, you know, just like, it was just these little bits and pieces. Yeah. But that was great, man. And it let you know that, like, Joe Clark don't give a fuck nowhere. Like, nowhere. Joe Clark, hey, mm-hmm. the kids can get it. Mm-hmm. The faculty can get it. The and parents, his parents can get, can it, get too. it, too. Get Even off the, the welfare. Yeah, get off the welfare. <laughs> Ah uh, man, Get so off the welfare. It, it, so and this is in the first twenty minutes of the movie. Yeah, letting you know this nigga don't give a fuck. They've established yeah that he, everybody can get it. Anybody can get it. Yeah, um, he's a hundred percent comfortable. And you know what? Like his speech, because what? So so what's interesting? And, and this is one of those movies that like the more I watch it, the funnier it gets. Right? Like I find this movie downright hilarious at some mm-hmm. time, but it is so well acted. Right. But like if you look at it, like the speech that he gives in that in that room with the parents mm-hmm. gives you the thesis of what he's trying to achieve. Mm-hmm. Right? You know, the Lord said, do whatever you have to. Right. Right? And yeah. he said he didn't say Joe, be polite about it. 
Nah. So that's why I threw them bastards out. And that's all yeah. I'm going to say. That's <laughs> all I'm going to say. And dipped them out and of there. dipped out. <laughs> well, and, she, and, and she scowled at him. She yeah. Was, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Boom. Hey. Checkmate. So now she now she's trying to go ahead. Now she's trying to go to the mayor mm-hmm. above him and everything. Yeah. Um. So he he ruffled them, their feathers. Hers hers for sure. Mm-hmm. Ruffled the vice principal's feathers. Yep. Gave uh, her the business. I felt so bad for her. Yeah. Man, he gave her the business the entire yeah, movie for no reason. Man. Oh, Miss Levias. Levias. Yeah, Miss Levias. Now, so when he, when he had um he had a, a meeting with the with the staff in the gym, mm-hmm. right? No, it wasn't the gym. It was the, it was the same situation. That first meeting in, that in, first in meeting the office when he was kicking out them three hundred kids. Yes, he was like, "I need everybody quiet and still when I'm talking." Mm-hmm. And so he reached down and picked a piece of paper up off the mm-hmm. ground. Yes, he said, "Mr. Darnell, Mr. Darnell, I, I say everyone quiet <laughs> and still." And he was like, "I was picking up. I didn't ask you what you were doing." Yeah, my office, my my, my office after this. Yeah, <laughs> Mr. So. Darnell was sitting in the row with the kids. <laughs> I saw that. When, when, after the, when Joe finally got back to the office, he was sitting. He was Mr. Darnell, sitting, I'm office. He was sitting on the road Next with to the, the kids, kids, bro. Yeah. And, that, and that's symbolic because he was treating them like, mm-hmm. in his mind, he got there. It was like, hey, I'm at this college. I'm at, I'm at this, this high school that's mm-hmm. in shambles. Yeah. The, 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 the kids are running wild. The yeah. teachers aren't teaching. Everybody's a fuck up. Everybody's a fuck up. Everybody deserves attention. Yeah. I need to slap everybody. Everybody starts with the zero. Like, yeah. you know, like, like how... Uh, no grace. Yeah, no grace. You know, like some people will say, like a new coach or a new boss, everybody starts with an A. Everybody has an A right, right. now. Yeah. And then you will determine whether or not you keep that you A. Keep that you A. Joe was like, all of y'all start with S. Y'all failed. Everybody's failing. Mm. And so, Mr. Darnell, you know, and like everything to Joe was a reflection of why this place ain't shit, right? Like, you know, you picking up that piece of paper or, or a piece of trash while I'm talking is why your kids can't pass right. the, beta, the, the, the basic tr- minimum skills test. Right. And here's the thing. That wasn't true. It wasn't. Because everyone said Mr. Mr. Darnell is a great teacher. Young black teacher yeah, that's passionate. Yeah, strong. Yeah. But that's what Joe had to it. learn. Yeah, yeah, because he was like, he was he, he didn't care. Everybody, like you said, everybody's at zero. So I don't yeah. respect you. You just like the kids. And it's almost kind of like to this point, like, because I'd be like waffling before, like, do I think Joe is wrong or do I think he's right? By the time Joe starts softening up and like letting these people's kind of message come in, it's like Joe can afford to do it because he doesn't clean the school up. Right. Right? So, like, now now what do you got to, like, I, okay, I, I'll pay attention to you now, but we can't even have this conversation until I get this graffiti off the walls, right. these kids where they're supposed to be, yeah. these, these drug dealers out, you know. So it's just like, yeah, like, he's an asshole about it, but he just needed to get everybody on the same page. Right. He and didn't he have did. time to waste. He, he didn't have time to waste he, 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 I don't give a fuck about your feelings. Mm-hmm. This is what needs to have, yeah. happen. Yeah, it needs yeah. to happen. I'm getting it done right now. Yeah. Who cares how you feel? The, the, Levias, Mr. Vias, uh, there's probably like a headline. Like, former assistant principal wins landscape lawsuit. <laughs> against the, oh, because yeah. the way he was given, when she was looking at the fountain, when they was doing the fountain presentation, he leaned up. He said, you having fun? Yeah, why you take your ass down? <laughs> Get, get them test scores. What am I supposed to wait? <laughs> he was a bubble burster. He was killing her vibe every day, bro. Every day. Everything was going well with that with that scene. Yeah. He was like, he said, uh, how long I got to wait? Yeah. He said, yeah. He said, you can go in there right now. Why don't you go down, yeah, why don't you go down to Trenton? <laughs> go down to Trenton, New Jersey. Yeah. We in Patterson. Go to Trenton. Yeah. Get those test scores. Go get those test wait. scores. They probably sitting there writing on somebody's desk right now. Go yeah. get them now. Yeah. yeah. And, and she was like, damn, nigga. It's so funny. And then I'm jumping ahead. And then when they finally got the test scores, the shits was low. This is like the preliminary test. He was yelling. so upset <laughs> at her. Yeah. Next time I tell you to get something, you're going to do it your goddamn self. He's wilding. This is why I waited all this damn time for this bullshit. <laughs> she was like, dang. Yeah. Yeah. And here's the thing. The test scores was 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 5% lower. Lower. It was 33%. It went from yeah. 38% yeah. to 33 It was lower. It was he lower. Said, this, is why, this is why I waited oh, man. for this bullshit. Oh, man. Um. Let's jump back to the iconic scene with Sam's, right? So Sam's is one of the kids on 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 stage that gets kicked off. 
He's one of the kids. He's smoking crack at ninth grade. Smoking crack. Yeah. And comes to see Mr. Clark. Now he's on the stoop. He's on yeah. the stoop. So he's there at the beginning of the school. Yes. Before the school even opens up. Mm -hmm. And Mr. Clark as the principal is one of the first people there. Yeah. And he sees a little chubby nigga on the on, on the front steps mm -hmm. of the school. Yeah. What are you doing here? What's your names? Thomas Sams. Sams? Sams. <laughs> he was like, <laughs> there's been a mistake, sir. I was one of those kids that you <laughs> but you made a mistake. Yeah, you made a mistake. A, a mistake. Yeah, <laughs> man. Looked at the looked at the at the clipboard and was like, "You smoke says here you some some and you smoke crack." He said, "You smoke crack? No, that wasn't me. Mm -hmm. You think I'm stupid, boy? <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> had no had no grace until the very end for Sam's. Like gave him the man. business, man, and he snatched him up." Mm -hmm. And drug him upstairs to drug the room. Drug him upstairs. And said, man, you know, you smoke crack, don't you? Mm -hmm. Don't you smoke crack? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Kills your brain cells, son. He, he says, you know what does here? Kills your brain cells. Kills your brain cells. <laughs> he says, he said, it's just as bad as dying. He's just doing it slower. Yeah. Which is true in a sense. Uh -huh. You know what I'm saying? He was like, man, you might as well jump. Go ahead yeah. and jump. Don't fuck around about it. Do it expeditiously. Don't fuck around about it. <laughs> oh. So great. He banged on him so So tough. great, man. He said, man, go mm -hmm. ahead and jump. Yeah. He said, you want to kill yourself, right? Mm -hmm. Don't fuck around about it. Do it, Let's do it expeditiously. Damn. That's a bar. That's a if bar. If I've ever heard one. Don't fuck around about it. Hey, nigga. Do it expeditiously. With, man. Do it now. He said, listen, I'm going to give you another chance because you're still young and you don't know shit. Because <laughs> you're a baby and you don't know and shit. you don't know shit. Love it. Love he it. He said, if I catch you smoking crack, mm -hmm. I, I did say I toss you. Just, uh, he, he said, say, threaten them. Yeah. And then I think he said, uh, like, there's another part. Mr. Clark didn't have no grace for him. He said, yeah, um. Did, did did you tell your father you got kicked out of school? Uh, no, my my father doesn't live with us. So, <laughs> so <laughs> said, oh, so you making excuses, please? <laughs> God damn, God damn, nigga, no grace, no grace. Man, hey, there was I I wanted as a filmmaker now looking back at at, at this movie and watching. I'm like, mm -hmm. man, I wish we had a little bit of character development from Joe Clark. At home, yeah. Why he was so Robert Guillaume, the, the Doctor Napier said, "Man, your mm -hmm. wife didn't let you, you left you." Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like you, you losing it, bro. You, you can't be this way. Mm -hmm. Continue to be this way. Yeah. So it, it, it let us know that he he has problems at home too, and that could be a reason why he's so bitter and upset. He's just a bully, kind of like everywhere. Like you know, he is um, one of those smartest guy in the room type of people, right? Like you know, smartest guy in the room. Um, you know, better than everybody, yeah. and just clearly, um, no behavioral control. You know what I mean? He's got he, a major temper. Yeah, you fly off the handle at, at at any you know piece. That's the shit. The thing is, he had no he he left no wiggle room, bro. Yeah, he was on your head from the beginning, mm -hmm. and, and sometimes you need that. And honestly, you did. East High High was a bad case. Yeah. They were a special needs case. They needed that special attention. Yeah. yeah. It was necessary. Now, the teachers, even like even when Miss uh Miss uh Levias told them they had that conversation in mid mid movie mm -hmm. where she was like, You're cruel. Yeah. You're bully. You're heartless. Heartless. And you're cruel. And she yeah. walked off on them. Mm -hmm. And because he was banging on her, even he even gave the dude the thumbs up. Remember, he gave Mister Beach, mm -hmm. uh, Darn, Mister Darnell, the thumbs up. Yep, yep. Like he was giving niggas love, but he yep. never gave never gave her no her. love. And it's like in his mind, he's like, "You, you the assistant principal. You, you my second in command. Yeah. So I need to be super tough on you." Yeah. And she was like, "She was like, I, I need my, I need you, I need you to transfer me out of here." Yeah. I need Are to you go. giving up? No, I'm not giving up. I'm quitting you. Mm -hmm. I don't deserve this no more. I don't deserve this period. Yeah. And she didn't deserve it. No. You know what I'm saying? She, oh. I mean, she was mistreated. I mean, what's so it's interesting. It's it's so interesting because if Joe doesn't, <laughs> this is, this is, I feel so bad about saying this. Uh oh. But if Joe doesn't mistreat her, then she don't take her ass down to Trenton to get them test scores <laughs> at the end of the movie <laughs> to get him out of jail. <laughs> get him out of jail. Yeah. <laughs> like so, it, it, hey man, you know, in, in, in all reality, the disrespect and the aggression he took, he yeah. he, he he exuded towards all the people around him mm -hmm. was necessary. It was some Joe Jackson shit. All yeah. the Joes. Yeah. The Jacksons. Something Michael, about Michael, Joe. Michael wouldn't have been great. Yeah. 
if Joe wasn't who he was. He had to, like, the only kind of, like, softness I saw him exhibit, he always had a, a soft spot for Kamisha. Mm-hmm. For, for, you know, he always had a soft spot for her. And even um, Puerto Rican homie, uh, Kid Ray. Kid Ray. Yeah. Like, that had, hey, bro, I, I ain't gonna lie, bro. Mm-hmm. That, 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 that got me a little bit, man. Yeah, yeah. This movie has so many messages, so many nuggets, and it showed it shows you that he cared, but this he's a throwback brother. He's a mm-hmm. throwback. Mr. Clark is a I don't he don't smile. Yeah. Ain't too much I love you. Ain't too much, ain't too many good jobs. Mm-hmm. It's get the job done so we can go home. Yep. And so when he when he found out that Kid Ray was dipping and, and move, he said, Man, so you you giving up, huh? Mm-hmm. He said, Man, I'm not giving up, man. I'm just moving on. It's not me for the school thing, you know? He said, man, he'd be dead in a year. He'd be dead in a year. He'd be dead in a year. Yep. And looked at him. Right. And and he was so sincere. Yeah, it shows it showed that he cared about. He cared him. about that kid. Dang, you know man. what I mean? Like, and that's know. what got me. I was like, dang, bro. Yeah. And that's when it's all said and done. That's what this movie is about. Mm-hmm. And it's a true story. Yeah, basically, yeah, it's a true story. Hundred percent. Watch this movie, y'all. It's a true story based mm-hmm. on on based on true events. I should say. Yeah. Um, I don't know about the 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 fire, uh, the chains on the doors. That, that all that's true. true. All that's yeah. true. That's dope. Bro. Um. The, going back to Kid, Kid Ray, it's and it's almost like in that scene where where Joe Clark says you'll be dead in a year, it's almost like Kid Ray is saying like I know, yeah, I, I know. Mean, he 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 didn't deny it. He didn't argue. He just yeah. says I gotta go. Yeah, and 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 homie had so much flavor and yeah. and, and potential. You know what I mean? Personality. Like, yeah, like the personality. Like if that guy could have got his head in the game. Who knows, you know, because he was likable, yeah. he understood fashion, he was very friendly, yeah. very affable, everybody was, everybody. comfortable around adults, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He was the Puerto, the Puerto Rican version of the of the black dude, the black student that, uh, I forget his name. Clarence? That took, not, uh, is it Clarence? The, the, the jokester? Yes. I love that guy. Yeah, he was. I love that guy. And yeah, and he was a kid. Yeah, he was. A, he was a, a Mr. Claw. We still got to go to school. Yeah, <laughs> right. Mr. Claw. We still got to go to school. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and yeah, of course, go to school right now. Get uh-huh. back to class. <laughs> um, that guy was great, but he still was on the front line. Yeah, we, 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 um, we were Mr. Clark, free Mr. Clark. He was the one that that that, that got the the bullhorn. Bullhorn. All right, y'all, settle down. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? listen. She might actually have something to say. Everybody should have a little loud mouth witch. Without mouth witch. And then strut it, strut it down. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He was he, he was, was a class clown and he also ended up being a lawyer, probably. I, so I lo- so here's what's great about this. Oh man, I love this movie. The kids did so well. Normally, like kid actors mm-hmm. be kind of like stale. It's kind of, you know, but these kids was Those believable. Kids. Uh-huh. They, they they was believable. They was really like, like I love the little Puerto Rican crew. Yeah. Right? Like, you know, like uh-huh. I loved all of their vibes. She, she had a, she, and I loved, yeah, I loved how she came to him with the whole, her little crew saying, man, mm-hmm. you got everything black here. Mm-hmm. We we go to school here too. Everything yeah. football team, black. For the black. Basketball team, for the black. Mm-hmm. We need some for us, for, yeah. the, for, the, for, for the Spanish. Yeah, yeah. And, and he, he, I, I don't know. We don't even know if he actually heard her, um, heard her plight and, and and made good with it. We can just assume he did though, mm-hmm. because they loved him. At yeah. the end of the day, she gave him a big kiss on the cheek. Yeah, when, when, yeah. So. Gave, gave him a kiss. Yeah, you know she was wilding out, like you know, in the in the front. Was, yeah, you know, just kind of like like uh-huh. going through it. It it was good, and and I like I remember this this cast being so good from a kid standpoint. Yeah. Only a handful of them oh, went, yeah, went on the, of them. went on to work. Like yeah. Kamisha worked. Uh-huh. Uh, that that girl that she, we're talking she about, some... she worked. I saw yeah. her in twenty four. Mm-hmm. But like our guy Clarence, who was super funny, I felt like man, yeah. like you know, I wanted to see more of him. Or, or even even uh, Kid Ray, I wanted to see more of him. Yeah. Like you know, the 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 guy that got Kamisha pregnant, I saw he worked uh-huh. for for it. Cosby for, Show. He, he was on like look, I saw him in a State Blake. Farm commercial. Uh-huh. You know, he was all in a bunch of stuff, but. But yeah, I would have loved to have seen, you know, Clarence is one of the, the more memorable right. characters because mm-hmm. he was funny. Like, he was always kind of funny. He was yeah. always getting into stuff. He was impersonating Dr. Clark. I mean, yeah. Mr. Clark. Had the Playboy. Yeah, you yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you know, just like, he was the kind of kid, like, I would have wanted to be his friend. 
and in honestly, the school. He reminded me of me. Yeah. I, even with the flat top mm-hmm. in high school, I, and I, I have a flat top in high school, but in, in elementary school, but I was smart, a, funny, yeah, class clown, class have potential, clown, popular. The teachers be like, "Hey man, Mister, tell my my parents that, hey man, he's yeah. a real good kid, smart, yeah. but he has a lot of energy." Because you could tell that everybody liked him. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. I mean, you could tell that he uh-huh. was. Well liked by the Puerto Ricans, uh-huh. by the blacks, they was by watching the faculty. Him like, like, like he was on stage. Yeah, like he's the guy. Mm-hmm. Like like you know he's he's the guy at the school. Um, it's a great. Movie. And so so even when he got there and they took the test for the first time and the test they, they failed thirty three percent out mm-hmm. of out of a hundred mm-hmm. and you needed a minimum of seventy five mm-hmm. to pass. Um, so he just he he just started cracking the whip. Um. The, the drug dealers started coming back. They started sneaking back into the school to mm-hmm. sell drugs, and he found out. Yep. And he caught one of them, one of like the big time drug dealers. Mm-hmm. They used to that, that guy was, that one that was beating up on Kid Ray. Yeah, yeah. And I'm thinking to myself, was that Miss Barrett's son? The mom that was mm. so upset with Joe oh, Clark. Oh yeah. That, that had this witch hunt for Joe Clark. That's a, that's a great. Whose what if? kid was you? That's ups- a great. Whose what kid if? was at the school? Yeah. Which one of your child children? Yeah. Was at the school that you so upset that he's doing all this thing? That's like, a great way. You if. should be supporting this dude, mm-hmm. but you mad that he kicked 300, 300 students out. Yeah. Here's the thing. Uh, Miss Barrett was whack. Yeah. Leona Barrett, because my, in my whack. mind, if I if I know my school, if I know you know the school is trash. Mm-hmm. I'm kicking out three hundred out of three thousand. Mm-hmm. Out of three thousand students, I'm kicking out only three hundred. Yeah. There's it's, it's a reason for that. And some and some people are like in their own world thinking like all kids need need a mm-hmm. helping hand mm-hmm. and they do you think in, in in essence they do right but some kids don't want no helping hand some kids are gonna do way worse some kids is just bad so he's like let me get rid let me cut let me cut this cancer off he said it in his speech mm-hmm. they say one bad apple dis- d- you know destroys the bunch well, what about three hundred because that's what I had. Mm-hmm. Right, I got rid of them. I got rid of them. That was the only way I was going to save be able the rest to of the school. Save the rest of the school. Save the kids that want to be here. Because mm-hmm. even though the kids were, it was in bad shape. Yeah, they were still coming to school every day. And really, really, what I loved about it is like in damn near like every scene, there's a kid painting graffiti, painting right. over graffiti, mm-hmm. and every little scene, yeah. there's somebody somewhere Cafeteria, helping hallway. helping to clean it up. Then you start seeing pride banners. Mm-hmm. You know, like like you start uh-huh. seeing all of that that t shirts t shirts reflective of his early classroom. Right, like the school. By the time we get to, you know, the point where they're getting ready to take the 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 test again, the real test, the school almost like mirrors the way his classroom looked. At, at the beginning, mm-hmm. with the affirmations yeah. and the belief, right. and you can do it all the way around. Right. Just classic. So it was weird to watch this dude bully everybody, but I, I, I could see the bigger picture. I saw that he was doing it for the greater good. Yeah. And he um, got results. He got results. He got results to the point where, like, the kids are excelling now. You know, so they all passing at the, the minimum requirements. Mm-hmm. And so. And the minimum choir was still 75%. Yeah. Yeah. Got them singing the school song. That's another thing. It, it, it got them feeling, having some, a sense of pride, pride for themselves. Yeah. 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 Let, self-value. So so let's talk about, okay, I want to talk about two scenes. Uh, one, the way he, uh, what was the original, the original music teacher? Uh, that wasn't Miss Powers. Now, Miss Powers, Powers was, was a black was lady. Sister, yeah. I think uh, it was Miss... Uh, Miss Elliot? Miss o- uh let's see. I'm looking at the Miss Robin Bartlett, Mrs. Elliot. Was it Mrs. Elliot? I think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 She she had to go. And here's the thing. <laughs> she she had- what, what, what she do you think she was wrong? I don't think that she was wrong, but I think that like she did not buy she did not buy into Joe's program. Back going back to the original first faculty meeting. She was rolling her eyes, very flippant, mm-hmm. you know, huffing and puffing. You know, when 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 Joe says, "I want the names of of all the miscreants by noon," mm. right? right? So she wasn't bought in. She was right in terms of what she was doing in terms of getting her the job. kids, you know. But she said something very important, which is like, and I'm kind of paraphrasing. 
you got to give respect to get respect, yeah. right? So if you want me to, you know, if you want to have a, a, a decent conversation with me, you have to come at me correct. Right. So I'm coming at you sideways because of how you coming at me, which ain't wrong right. in anybody else's school right. besides Joe Clark's. Yeah. <laughs> you know who you're talking to? Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? You're fired. You're fired. <laughs> you're, like, because she hit him with... Uh, um, she hit him with something. They hit him with like three parts words. Mm-hmm. She was like, "You know what I mean? Canceled, as in, you know, such and such and such." And such. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're fired. Fired. You're from my lawyer yeah. with the little tap on the wall. <laughs> yeah, she wasn't wrong. She was. She was teaching the kids Mozart, and he's like, "While you're sitting here teaching the kids Mozart," and he he was t- even telling the faculty, like, mm-hmm. or telling uh, Napier. These teachers don't have a connection to these kids. They yes. don't really give a fuck. Yes. They're doing their job. They're good teachers as far as they're doing their job. And they're, they're and her job is to teach them Mozart. Mm-hmm. And he, he was like, but then they're, they're, she's not looking at the bigger, at the bigger picture. Yeah. These kids need to know the, 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 the school song to have yeah. some self-pride yeah. in where they go to school at. What what is the how is Mozart going to help them? How is Mozart going to help them when they mm-hmm. can't get the job? Yeah. He well, asked her that. Yep. And she and of course she had she had feedback, mm-hmm. rebuttal, but like he fired her. Fired her. Um, I don't know if I would have fired her, but in his mind, he was like, it's not about her. She has a point. She has some right here. Mm-hmm. But I, mean, I, I but I, I need you guys to know it doesn't matter what you think. You What you guys think of, it doesn't matter anymore because of what, the past. The past Joe Clark has got you guys no results. Is running this like Beanie Siegel from state property. Get down and lay down. Get down and lay down. Get down and lay down. Get down. Get down. Get down. That's that's how he's running. No nonsense, Joe. No nonsense, Joe. He could be down. right. You're still wrong because I'm yeah. the boss. Get down and lay down. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, she didn't. But I think, I think what's what's clear is is that Miss Powers related to the kids in a way that Miss Elliot never could. Right. 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 Miss, they came to Miss Powers to learn the school song, and she remixed it. And Miss Powers it. remixed the shit out of it. Mm-hmm. It was Miss Powers that got the kids on their feet at the auditorium in the assembly right before they took the test. Mm-hmm. Right, yeah. So Miss Powers was the right teacher for that school, mm-hmm. which is so important, right? Because Miss Elliot would not have. I don't think Miss Elliot would have cared enough right. that any kid learned the school song. Mm-hmm. Even though she said she would do it, right? Like, you know, but no. But Miss Powers did. Yeah. And gave us our, our fair east side. But as I was saying, no way. Yeah. There's a loyalty, loyalty. Yeah. yeah. She had all kinds of shit going yeah. on in there, man. She did her thing. Miss Powers. Yeah. Um, So... He has about ten months to turn this this, this school around, mm-hmm. and he's making good time. Like there's no more drugs in the in the, in, the, in the school. They're cleaning it and, up, and especially once he found out the kids or the, the drug dealers were stinking back in there, mm-hmm. he started putting chains on the door, chain the doors. So, so like mm-hmm. once the kids are in there for the day, mm-hmm. he said, "Yo, y'all in here until the rest of the, into the school year. The school day is off. Yep, and then y'all can leave." Mm-hmm. In his mind, like y'all don't have no reason to leave the school anyhow. So right. anybody coming in, anybody getting out, we good. And that that makes uh, Miss Miss Barrett. Lose her mind. She, man. It's a safety hazard, yeah. a fire hazard. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and what? We gonna, Clark! <laughs> we gonna get you shut down. Yeah. And he knew that that could possibly get him shut down. He knew that even though he... He, he knew st- it was illegal. He stood on what he did, but he was like, this is illegal, and I, and I, and I might get shut down for this. Yeah. Effort. He had to do what he had to do. Yeah. He had to do what he had to do. Um... So yeah, and and so transforms the school. You know what I mean? You know, I want you to put the kids on a weight program. You know what I mean? Like you know, like you know, come in on Saturday. So that, you know, if their parents can't come read, in on Saturdays, yeah, they can come in too. They can come in too. He's changing the shape of the city, bro. Yeah, yeah. call their house. Da 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 da. So what happens if the kids don't want to come to work? Mm-hmm. Come to class. Mm-hmm. Go get them. Yeah, go get them. We knocking on the door. We talking to their parents, right? And he, and he showed improved. Yeah. He, he practiced what he preached. He went to uh, Rame- oh. Renisha's house? Kamisha. Kamisha's house. Kamisha got prepped. Oh, no. Well, when Kamisha was, was sitting I had no in, place to go. Yeah. My mama kicked me out. I love that scene, too. Yeah, it was hard, too. I love that scene. Man, man. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. They had they, they had they had a lot of heartfelt scenes yeah. in this film. And this is where Miss Levias... Miss Levias is showing her value throughout the movie. Joe don't ever give her no credit. But when they in there at Kamisha's house, you know... Joe about to go Joe. 
you know, I remember you was one of my, you know, one of my most active parents. What the fuck happened to you? Yeah. Like, he, was, he was on his yeah. way to be no wiggle that. room. No yeah. wiggle room. And then she was like, listen, calm down. Why? Why would Kamisha think that you don't want that her you don't want her anymore? You know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. boom, like had to step up in, in, in front of Joe's ass. Before he made matters worse, and before, that was yeah. a good scene. Before he, because because the mom would have probably shut down. Yeah, get my house. Yeah, leave. I, I don't want to do this, but I love her. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, stuff. When, um, I don't want her seeing me like this. And it's so yeah, yeah. It, it's so realistic and very relatable. This film mm-hmm. deals with like drug abuse as teenagers, drug abuse with your parents, teen pregnancy, uh, teen pregnancy, mm-hmm. uh, teen illiteracy. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So it dealt with so many things. And how a, how, a, how one person can spark a flame in the, in the hearts and the, in the yeah. spirits of these kids to make them want to do better. I remember being a kid, bro. Mm-hmm. I'm going to keep it 100. In eighth grade, bro, I was failing. I was flunking out. Mm-hmm. My mom came to my, my parent. My, is it open house? It was it open house? Yeah. It used to be either back to school night or open house. Yeah, Those but, were the two. Well, at the end of the, end of the day, mm-hmm. you see all the teachers, and the teacher give you a report card mm-hmm. or a progress report card. My mom got the progress report card, bro. I had three Fs, two Ds, and one C. Mm-hmm. And my mom looked at me like I was crazy. I went to school every day. Yeah. And she looked at my mom. I was like, I was I was flunking out. I was probably I probably gonna have to do the seventh grade over. Right. That was seventh grade. Um, no, I'm sorry, eighth grade. Eighth grade. And uh she was so upset with me that she couldn't even talk to me on the way home. Like, mm-hmm. you you just not even giving a fuck about your education. Yeah. And I I was just running the streets, running around, doing goofy shit, man. And my mom worked so so many hours, mm-hmm. so she she was we we had to be asleep by the time she came home from work around midnight, and we had to be up before she got up to go to work. So I, I was I see my mom sometimes. She was independent, yeah, mm-hmm. just running around doing what the fuck I wanted to do, and then she wasn't checking because she was so tired. Yeah, yeah. And so, but then fast forward to me going to live with my pops. My pops literally is Joe Clark, man. I, don't know, I, 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 I might have mm-hmm. brought him up before yeah. on the on, on some of these episodes. Yeah. Like, if you if, if anybody that's watching this that knows me and knows my dad, nigga, no wiggle room. And my pops was a motherfucker. <laughs> he was he was Morgan <laughs> Freeman, Samuel Jackson, and Furious Styles from Boys. All Love, of them, all mixed up. Like, like mm-hmm. you, you couldn't tell you can. I, I can never say I don't know to mm-hmm. my father. I can never shrug my shoulders. I can never not respond to him Those without little me. things. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I cannot. I could not not look him in the eye. Mm-hmm. And if he asks me a question, it's not rhetorical, nigga. Yeah. Answer me. Yep. Why would you do this? Mm-hmm. Even 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 if my answer was because I can get away with it. Yep. I thought I can get away with it because I wanted to. Even I know it was wrong. Tell me the truth, nigga. That's that character building shit. Yeah, right there, yeah. That's that character building shit right there. I went from flunking out to graduating from high school with straight with straight A's. Yeah. Not because I was just a genius ass kid. I, I wanted to do better. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I mean and that's what Eastside High was. They yeah. wanted to do better, and you can see it. Eighth grade is a is a pivotal time. Mm-hmm. You know, had that not happened, like, you know, the trajectory, there's a lot of people that, that kind of go awry a little bit. Um, but that's what Joe was. And what I loved about it is is it, didn't it feel like he knew every student in the Name. school? Bro, I promise you, I was like, dog, mm-hmm. that would be dope if I was a principal. Could that even be possible? If you yeah. really take your time and spend every day of your of, of, of the school year mm-hmm. going to each class and looking at the list and meeting every kid, mm-hmm. every kid. And uh, of course, you can't remember 2,000 plus kids. Yeah. But you, could you remember 2,000 plus kids if you practiced the, learning their names? And and spend the whole school year trying to have a five minute conversation with every kid. He not only did he seem to know every kid, but seemed to know where they were supposed to be. Right? Don't you? Don't you got history? Yeah. Don't you got English class? Yeah. You you had lunch last period. Get out of here. Right? Like you know, like had a read on everybody. Was patrolling the halls. Mm-hmm. Sam, <laughs> put that back. Yeah. Had his, had his megaphone, mm-hmm. patrolling the halls, knew where everybody was supposed to be. Seemed like you could come to him with an issue, and he would handle it. Like, right. He in the office when baby girl was like, listen, you know, why aren't you in class? I need to call my baby. Okay, come with me. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, you know, let these, you know, Mr. Such and Such, let, let her use the phone. Let her use the phone. Boom, boom, boom. Running it. Like, yeah. running the whole thing. And showing them that, he, that they matter. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we get to, you know, the 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 test, you know, they 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 have the big pep rally for the test with the mm-hmm. classic lean on me. Mr. Rogers, uh Mrs. Powers, Mrs. Powers sings lean on you me. Know, shuts it down. Mm-hmm. I love the way the kids were singing and he finally dancing. gave he finally gave uh Miss uh, Levias her props. Yeah. Gave and her he love. Have been gave it to her because she backed him up mm-hmm. so many times. Yep. But he was so 
he was so hardened, bro. I think he was so jaded from his past. Yeah. And just the condition of black people in general, black mm-hmm. youth that he saw, he was so hard he couldn't even see yeah. the, his the arrow in his ways. You know I, I mean, like that combined with the with the great montage, he is somebody. Right? Uh-huh. Like, you know, yeah. like <laughs> a lot of yeah. So like, so we get to to the end, they have the test, and then here comes Mrs. Barrett. Yes, because she found out that he was chaining the date. He was chaining the gates, mm-hmm. the doors of the school to keep the drug dealers out. Yeah. Which makes sense. If I if I don't chain the gates mm-hmm. or the doors, these drug dealers will let their their friends was stink them in, open the door for them. Mm-hmm. We got to chain the doors. Yeah. While the kids are here in school, they don't need to leave, so we'll chain the doors. And that was the time. code ten. You know, he he went and got he had, he called a meeting, a faculty meeting. With his real ones, the people on the on the mm-hmm. staff that he trusted, uh-huh. and he was like, "This is what we're doing. Wow. We locking these doors. If you hear code ten on the radio, go to your specific you go to your, key. and unlock go to your specific unlock door. Your door. Mm-hmm. And that's how he was keeping them at bay. But then finally, you know, Mrs. Barrett, the mayor, the fire chief got the um, got a court order. You know what I mean? A search it's warrant, a subpoena in. to walk in, and then that's how they catch you know Mr. Clark. Mm-hmm. They take him to jail. Yeah. Uh, and he's inside the jail cell chilling. Chilling. <laughs> and he, chilling. Uh, while he was being taken away in handcuffs, they mm-hmm. said, what happened, Mr. Clark? What they do to you? Mm-hmm. He said, I broke the law. And this is what happens when you break the law. You got to suffer the consequences. Mm-hmm. Even in his him feeling he was right, he, mm-hmm. had, to, he had to set an example. He had to set an and example. even if it wasn't the right thing to say. Yep. I need them to know that breaking the law is wrong. You got to rest it the right way. And even if I know I'm doing this for a good cause, mm-hmm. I'm not going to justify it in front of these kids. I'm yep. going to let them know. I'm going to jail because I did something Cause wrong. Because I did something wrong, right? right. Um, which is great, which leads to the the iconic, you know, free Mr. Clark. Free, free Mr. Clark. They came down the block. They came down heavy the block. Th- <laughs> hey, heavy. They spun the block They heavy. spun the block. was yeah. like free Mr. Clark. Yeah. And they was outside the jail which is that basically, you know, jail, this is jail city hall, there, city jail, hall, convention center, yeah. all that shit. Yeah. Municipal building, Civic the whole center, shit. Yeah. 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 And so he was like, man, you might want to see this. He looked mm-hmm. out the window, he see all these kids. It was all out there. About a thousand, fifteen hundred. Free, Mr. Clark. Free, Mr. It was great. Mm-hmm. You know, the, that the, made me feel proud, bro. I loved it. I loved it. Then the mayor came down. It was like, Joe, I need your help. I don't do, I gotta do shit but stay black and die. I need your help, man. You gotta help, you gotta help me here. I don't gotta do shit but stay black and die. That's <laughs> my a bar. favorite line. A bar, yeah. Favorite line. And it, it was a good moment with there. It was a good moment with, with him and Dr. Napier. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you know, like good, good. I mean, his relationship with Dr. Napier was dope. D- D- Dr. Napier was like, brother, I will go to the fire for you. You know what I mean? When they was yelling. Yeah, but you were wrong. Yeah, you were wrong, da da da. Cursed his ass out, and did this earlier scene earlier, and was like, yeah. "Let's go get something to eat." He said, <laughs> "Man, he said you so hyped up on being mm-hmm. on discipline. Mm-hmm. How about starting off by taking mm-hmm. some taking mine, taking mine? Because, because it's true. He said, he said uh, contrary to what you, you believe, believe, I'm I- the head nigga in charge. <laughs> I'm the boss. Yeah, nigga. that's great. And walked up out of here. Listen, that was and so get something to eat. So going back to that." That was like two acting powerhouses. Come on, bro. Like just two like matching energy yeah. and like, you know, intensity. intensity. And that's, man, for, for, for Robert Guillaume, that was a really difficult part to play because Joe's been at 10 the, the whole, whole time. Movie. And in order for this interaction to seem believable, you got to somehow get to eleven. You know how big you got to be? How big you got to make him be look small? To to put him in, in check. This place, yeah. This this bully, this pit bull, this you know this this guy. You got to become a Kane Corso. Listen, man. Uh-huh. And that's exactly what Guillaume was doing. He, hey, man. Truth, truth to what you, uh, uh, he's like, mm-hmm. what, what you say? Oh, contrary to what you believe. Yeah. I'm the head nigga. Yes. I'm the boss. You do what I say. He said, you will kowtow. You will step and fetch. <laughs> yeah, you do whatever I tell you, you to do. You do whatever I tell you to do. And then he had to take it. Pause. Mm-hmm. He had to be like, hey, man, mm-hmm. let's go get some meat. Yeah. Attitude and all. Yeah, and but Walpass said, you, you think, think you, you bad. bad. Yeah. That's a great friendship. That basically said, you got me. You got You won. Yeah. Big homie. Yeah. And it's just been like, listen, like as evidenced by the fact that like, they keep it real with each other. Mm-hmm. They've been keeping it real with each other yes. for over 20 years. Yep. Right? Napier stayed in the game. 
Napier maybe obviously he knew how to play the game. Superintendent in a or way, something. Yeah, he was a superintendent. Yeah. In a way that Joe obviously never couldn't. Right. Right. And Napier says for like 20 years, I've been waiting on an opportunity. I've been trying to get you back in the game. And this is the time. This is the time. Because it was Napier's idea to bring in Joe. So yeah. He's a real one, man. He fought for him. Fought for the him. The mayor was like, absolutely not. We're not doing that. You ain't bringing Joe Clark back. Yeah. No, sir. He's like, listen, the only people that want this job are unprepared or, you know. Don't or, have the guts to yeah, do this. Do what needs to be done. And so we there. We get the great scene where, where the kids kind of get to take their turn, you know, speaking about who Joe Clark was and, and what, what he, he means meant. to them. Oh, it was so good. It was so good. Like, uh, like some of the some of the greatest lines and worst lines were said. Like Kamisha was like, you know, like Joe Clark is it's it's like a you know, not only is is, is Mr. Clark East Side High, Mr. Clark is like a father. You know, mm-hmm. he's a, he's the he's the only father. Some of us who yeah, don't have fathers yeah, have. Man. And I felt that. Woo. I felt that like, you know, man. In, in my bones. Because that's that's the state that like you like, like we said before. Uh, this movie translates so well. Yeah, this 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 movie can happen in twenty twenty three. Right, hundred percent. And there's been Idris Elba be the coach. There's uh, been a uh, thousand knockoffs of this movie. Uh huh. Right. Like like we've seen the one eighty seven. The one eighty seven. Samuel Jackson. Yeah. Freedom Riders. Freedom Riders. Yeah. Like you know they've always come in and been like the teacher that that ch- stand and deliver. Uh-huh. Right. Like you know the teacher that comes mm-hmm. in and kind of changes things. Um. But this 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 one this, this one's had heart. Yeah, because I feel like the the kids, mm-hmm. man, the kids were so relatable. Yeah. And everybody can relate to the, everyone that knows at least a kid like that yeah. or a parent like that yeah. or a teacher like that. It, I feel like you can relate to any, to at least one person in this film. Even like dumbass Sam's who was like, we don't want a good principal. We, we want, want Mr. Mr. Clark. <laughs> I said, man, yeah, I get it. I get what you're trying to but do. But that's, that's how you want to deliver that line? You exactly. know what you're saying? Exactly. Um, and it was great. So then, like, you know, Joe comes out. Crowd goes wild. They give him the microphone. You know, he's trying, he's to, trying to get them to leave. Shush him away. Here come Mr. Vias. The, the the police vans is pulling up. They SWAT. pulling up. Just, they got the batons. Yeah, they ready. They to, about they about to clean, clear the they, quad. They, they in the back surrounding the perimeter, yeah. waiting yeah. for the go. They like a little real good subtle work. Like one cop kind of comes in in the background and whispers in the mayor's ear. Yeah, you know what I mean. And so it's going down, and then Mr. Vias comes in, and and. Uh, Show read this. He said, "I don't have time right now." He said, yeah, yeah, "I left yeah. you in charge." <laughs> you, but hey, my nigga, shut up. <laughs> right. Read, right, right. And uh, they passed the. He said they passed the minimum requirements. Yeah, crowd goes wild. Crazy. It crowd. went from thirty three mm-hmm. to seventy seven percent. He gives props to his guy, Mister Napier. Mm-hmm. Says Mister Mayor, who, in a true politician, is buttoned up his jacket like he' about to give a speech. Right. And was like, "Listen, you can tell the state to go to hell." Right, boom, and then uh, and I love the I love the post credit scenes. Like I love seeing, yeah. I love seeing the graduation, the graduation, and him talking to him. Just lean on me, man. Lean on me, man. Uh, just a man that has all the great intentions, but not always the best words yeah. and the best tactics to get his his yeah. point across. Very crude, very very vicious, very. Very uh, uncomfortable, off putting. Mm-hmm. But he, but at the end of the day, he really loved the kids. He came down to Kanisha's Kanisha's house yeah. and talked to her mom. Mm-hmm. I and made he was effective. He was effective, bro, and he was genuine. Yeah, it was he genuine. did he did what needed to get done. He learned the lessons that he needed to learn, and he was the only person that could have done it. Right, right. So I like you know watch this. Like if if you call yourself a you know a you know, a black movie head yeah. or a black like this is required this is watching. Required this, watching. This is required watching. And again, this movie can give you whatever it is that you're looking for. This 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 movie yes. is certainly dramatic. Dramatic, right? This movie is hilarious and and and, and it has funny, moments unintentionally sure. funny. Yeah. Like even when Joe was cursing them niggas out, right? Like you know, shit's funny to me. It's like it's it's over the top. Uh-huh. It's but it's but. Like it's aged well. Yes, it's a great movie. You yes. know me is is a fantastic movie. And I like how real it is. Where even when Shamika got pregnant by a dude, dude mm-hmm. wasn't a bad kid. Nah, he was a good kid. He was the class he president. Smashed. 
He smashed the chick, no rub. Mm-hmm. Or he didn't. Oh, yeah, he probably had no rub. Yeah. And now he, as like little boys, don't want to own up to what yeah. they've done. Yeah. I'm pregnant. Shit. He's probably scared the shit out of him. I don't yeah. know his mind. You sure it's mine? I'm going to make sure shit because I ain't never been with no other boy. He's the only one I was with. <laughs> right. Perfect. He wasn't a bad dude. He wasn't a bad dude. And he probably, so. I, 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 he probably man. grew up to be a like a, like a bitch ass. He probably here's the thing. <laughs> I kind of feel like here's the thing. Yeah, I feel like oh boy, Clarence mm-hmm. grew up to be a lawyer and or the owner of something or yeah. the, like the like the manager somewhere. Like I own um, three Chick Fil A's. Right, yeah. something <laughs> like that. Yeah, Next to Mr. Clark and come yeah. and see Mr. Clark Mr. later Clark, on. In the years. Yeah, exactly. But I think that um, what was his name? Calvin. It wasn't Calvin. <laughs> it feels Shemika, like it, feels like his name should have been Calvin. Calvin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Shamika and, 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 and uh, the dude. He probably ended up doing what he was supposed to do because he seemed to be. Yeah, and I, I, I don't. I, I don't think they stayed together. No, you know what I'm saying. No, no, no. Um, like I think like. I think he probably went on to be to college. Was what's interesting is is what kind of person he grew up to be. Right. You know what I mean? Like you know because he was he was like a little corny, yeah. little, little corny. But he was the class president, so mm-hmm. he certainly was ambitious. So you know, I think who knows? I think he ended up being responsible. I think you, yeah. And this not with her. Just a decent guy. It, it, it take it's probably gonna take him a while. Take him the first couple of years to really just buckle down and, and yeah. be a pops. Yeah. But he's a, he's still a kid. He's still a teenager. He's mm-hmm. still in high school. Yeah. Now, I feel like the uh, the uh, the little court the, the quintet. Yeah. They probably went on the, the record. They, they they grew up to become troop. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they know they, on on um on Wikipedia. It has them listed as Riff. Oh. So they were a group, I guess, in oh. real life. Riff. Right. Yeah. It's great, though. Um, yeah. Okay. MVP. Let's give off some awards. Who's the MVP. MVP of Lean On Me? MVP of Lean On Me is Joe Clark. Joe Clark? Yeah, hands down. Okay. I got no problems with that. Mm-hmm. No problems with yeah. that at all. Easy peasy. I, you know where I'm going with it. I do. Dr. Napier. Dr. Dr. Napier. <laughs> Dr. Napier. I know. <laughs> Dr. Napier. Yeah. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. Though, as vicious as Joe Clark is, mm-hmm. Napier was a beast too. Napier was a I beast. I couldn't imagine him not being able to do the same thing. Yeah. Mr. Dr. Joe Clark or, mm-hmm. or Frank Napier coming to that cl- coming to that school. But yeah. here's the thing. He knew... The best he, I, he probably could have been a principal there, and mm-hmm. and it could have been just as dope, uh, just as effective. But he knows I can't reverse, I can't switch with with Joe. Joe not gonna mm-hmm. be able to handle these politicians. So I, let me stay in my role yep. and fight to get him in this role because this is where he gonna thrive at. He yep. probably can't do my job. Mm-hmm. I could probably do his, but he don't have the couth. Nine out of ten times, you know when it's like when we're talking about sports, mm-hmm. let's say football, yeah, coaching quarterback. Mm-hmm. And the quarterback is amazing. Nine out of ten times, I'm like, the quarterback deserves all the credit. Mm-hmm. Right? You know what I mean? They always like right. to give it to coach. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, you know, coach such and such and such. But yeah, the kid making the plays. Yeah. Like, you know. The, Joe, Michael Vick, it was him. Sk- the guy scrambling out of the pocket, having a vision, staying calm. Give it to the quarterback. Mm-hmm. And this, and lean on me, Joe Clark is the quarterback. Yeah. But this is the one time where like, Napier had the vision from beginning to end. Mm. Napier knew that Joe was the right man for the job. He tried to he tried to uh, swindle him by, hey man, he asked for you personally. Yeah, yeah. The mayor asked for you by name. Hustling said, that, Come on, you know what I mean? Cut it out. Not afraid to insult Joe to his face, knew exactly what to say to Joe to get Joe to respond, served as guardrails for Joe to keep his ass That's in crazy. check and in line. You know what I mean? Like, you know, like... Bro, I fight for you. I you, fight. And, and you tripping. You, you wrong, tripping. Joe. You wrong. Mm-hmm. So so I got to give it to Napier because I, if, if Napier doesn't choose Joe Clark, Eastside High goes back to the state. It so does. It's, Fast. It's Napier's call. This this is Napier's, Napier's plan. The, the head coach behind it all. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. LVP. LVP. This is interesting. Oh, man. Who's the LVP of LVP? Uh, damn. 
I want to say the white lawyer homie with the with the receding. Yeah, with the bad jokes. But he's the one that so he's the, he's he was the, the one. snitch. He was the you know he was the one that was sitting in the Napier's homie. Yeah, he's the yeah. one that told Joe Clark about the, they come to get the chains. Mm-hmm. They, they come to check to catch you with the chains. Mm-hmm. So I'm I'm gonna give you mine. Okay, I feel bad doing this because there's no real like. LVPs, there's no real like losers. Like, right. Miss, like, Mrs. Barrett is the villain, but she's not the LVP. No, 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 no. She's very much yeah. pushing him. Yeah. She's challenging him. So, and I feel like he was a good teacher. Yeah. I felt like he was a good guy, but I'm, I'm giving it to, to Mr. O'Malley. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right. And the only. He ran in there, he was a buster. Yeah. <laughs> he never, he never, ever, every, he never stood up yeah. to Joe Clark. Yeah. Mr. Darnell did. Yeah. Miss Levice did. Mm-hmm. Uh, Miss, uh, uh, even, even Mrs. Miss Elliot. Elliot. And she got fired, but right. she was cool with it. Right. She was like, oh, fuck it. I'm gone. Every time. And the one thing, and we never saw, we never saw Mr. O'Malley be a good teacher. Right. Right, like even in all the montages, he's always by himself. Yeah, you know, like no like, one reveres him. You got Mr. Beach, you got the guy that they promoted, the white guy that they promoted to to coach, and he's working with um with with Sam's on right. the on the different thing, and you never get to saw Mr. O'Malley like you know like one on one tutoring. So whenever we saw him, he was either getting cursed out, yelled out, or pumped, right, and, and, or clapping off beat. <laughs> well, yeah, 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 something. Yeah, this is my yeah, LVP. LVP. This is my LVP, LVP. for sure. Um, overacting. Mm. Overacting. Uh, it's somebody for sure. I mean, Sam's. Sam's is. I a thought nominee. about him. Sam's is a nominee. We're doing the Uchi Coochie, you know what I mean? Like, you know, just do it. But he's a kid. He's a kid. He's but a he's kid. walking in the hallway. Let me cut him some slack. Yeah, he's me. Let me cut him some slack. Yeah, me. Let me cut him some and flat. no one's watching him. No cameras on him. This is true. He's just being silly in front of the pack of the homies, this the older true. homies. And he's trying to be silly for them. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. I, I can see a, 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 a 14 year old kid with no one, no cameras around, being mm-hmm. silly with his friends. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Quoting the movie, I get it. quoting. Tana, me, Tony Montana or some shit. Let me be easy on, on yeah. Sam. He's had a rough oh. life. Um, yes. Okay, my vote for, for the overacting award has to go to the attendees of the student board meeting, right? If you... The first one? The last one. The last one. The last one, right? Like, you know, the ones where, where the kids, like, approach. I want you to rewatch that job. Mm-hmm. There's some combustive-ass extras. <laughs> like the people get up yelling at like you know like uh-huh. like to me it was just like they're going way too hard I'm doing that because I can't really find any other character right I don't feel like Joe was overacting nah he was on point Mr. Darnell was good Mr. Darnell was great solid uh, even homie the the you know like uh, super thug that got kicked out of the school yeah you know what I mean like you know you know he was you know you know he was yeah, I'm gonna get you man yeah he was I'm legit get you man yeah, maybe the overacted award could go to the suitcase drug guy. Um, you know when when he came in and they and they opened the suit and he, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. Like you know when he went in, he was selling selling guns and shit inside uh-huh. the school. Like maybe that guy was yeah. a little bit too obvious. And yeah, it's uh, yeah, just like Kumo D. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah just it's like Kumo D. That this nigga shouldn't be in the school. Yeah, he walked right in. Yeah, he looks as old as Joe Clark. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, um, he got to go. Yeah, um, nah, I-, I can see that. Yeah. Um, okay, fist. Oof. I would give it ten if I had it. Yeah, five. Yeah, man. five, five, five. Classic. I- I'd watch it again. Yeah. Um, uh, I'd want to watch it with like. This-, this is the type of movie you can put in the high school yeah. and have kids. At risk kids watch it, or just mm-hmm. kids, all the kids watch it. But for sure, this is this is the uh, the type of film you play in front of at risk kids or juvenile delinquents, mm-hmm. and, and have a discussion afterwards. Listen, this is the type of movie that you could play there, the type of movie that you could play at a barbecue with mm-hmm. your fam, right? This is the type of movie that you could actually play with the sound off, yeah, and just have conversation mm-hmm. about. The movie, like we doing now, right? It's like for me, this is top tier 
top tier five, filmmaking. Five black fists. Top tier. It's uh, one of the best. Dialogue. Yeah. R- r- the writing is strong. The performances are strong. The message is extremely strong. Mm-hmm. It's a movie that had to be made and needed to be needed to be made. Five fists for sure, bro. Yeah. Five yeah. fists for sure. Absolutely, man. Listen, so you gonna you gonna end the show? Uh because if you're gonna do it, don't fuck around, do it expeditiously. <laughs> Don't fuck around. You end the show. Do it expeditiously, man. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna end the show and I'm gonna do it expeditiously. Uh huh. Um, man, lean on me, bro. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I wish, man. This is something that I, I always say this, mm-hmm. and it's true even for this movie. Is there's so many things I can say more about it? Yeah. If I could break down every scene, I could. We could talk about yeah. every scene. But I mean, there's so many different scenes right, here. Right. Um. Like, like, again, like we just kind of like touched on like I want to like the, his interaction with the Puerto Ricans. We're yeah. all my white students. All my yeah. white students stand up. It's poor white trash. No, yeah, poor they white just trash. like us. Yeah, exactly. Sit down now. Sit down. They would have been. They would have been anywhere else if they if they if they could be. Well, they hear it. They, they hear, hear East side. side. Yeah. He turned that school down. He he turned that school around in ten months, mm-hmm. and um, it seemed like it was a genuine change. Yeah. And he and him being so so stone hard cold pause, mm-hmm. he uh that that was the, the that was the boost that, that the school needed yeah. to to pay attention. It's a, you know it's been a long time since I've been in school, but I remember that like certain principals had that mm-hmm. effect. Yeah, like they were almost kind of like I remember like my early principals like feeling like they were almost like royalty. Mm. Like they were just, you know, like like you know, I went to Dublin, and for a long yeah. time, it was Mrs. Shepherd, and mm-hmm. eventually Doctor Shepherd. Mm. She's a black lady, kind of looked like looked like Miss Powers. Miss Powers, right? Um, always smelled like that old lady, mm-hmm. old black lady perfume. Mm-hmm. Always had Sand the sable. Yeah, you know what I mean? Like mm. you know, uh, white diamonds mom. or some shit. White diamonds, right? Right. That's my mom. You know, rocking. always you know had the same dress, and I just remember that like. When she would say, keep going or, you know, keep doing it. It was one of those things where it was just like, yeah, like, I believe it. Like, yeah. whatever you see, I see too, mm-hmm. right? Right. Um, and that was at the elementary level. So mm-hmm. to come in and transform a school at, you know, at, at the high school level, man, you know, phenomenal. Man, it's it's crazy. It's crazy how every, even the bad teachers Perform well. Not the, no, actually, there were no bad teachers. Mm-hmm. They were. They were. I, I think the the situation with the with the uh, the choir code, the choir teacher, she was just on a different path. Yeah. Path. Yeah. They were on a different page. She was right. The way he would talk to her uh-huh. was wrong. She was a hundred percent right. Right. But I think she better was fit somewhere else. That's you know that's what happens sometimes in in business. Even right. though it's a school, it's mm-hmm. just like you're super talented, but. We run a different program here, yeah. right? We need Miss Powers to take yeah. the lead now. Some, like some, I've worked at some jobs where, you know, this is in the, in the startup space and big company space where, like, the CEO is like at nine o two, looking mm-hmm. who's not here at nine o two. Mm. He cares about that, right? Right. So if you can't get to work at nine o'clock, you and him are not going to get along. Yeah. No matter. The, no matter if you walk in at nine oh five and work through lunch and leave at six, he cares that you're not here at nine. Right, right. It's a, it's a precedent that he's trying to. This set. is very important. Yeah, I've had other CEOs who like all I care about is performance. Yeah, right. How you get there? No I don't matter. care. You know what I mean? Like you know, you can get here at ten, and as long as everything is done like it needs to get done. So they had, I think, one of those just philosophical differences, yeah. right? That like. They weren't going to get along. Um, she was not going to be disrespected. Right. right. He, was, he was sending teachers in front of teachers and sunning kids. Sending teachers in front of kids. Hey, bro, put me to the side and talk to me. Hey, yeah. I, I, hey bro, Dr. Uh, Mr. Clark, you mm-hmm. can't talk to me like this. I wouldn't allow it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Now, you can fire me. I know you're my boss. You can fire me or I can fire on you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? One of the two. I mean, that's but what Mr. Darnell was on. Yeah. Mr. Darnell was nah, on. Bitch. First of all, Mr. Darnell was like, I took the demotion. Mm-hmm. I'm busting my ass for you. Right. Like, leave me the fuck alone. Yeah. Like, show or me some respect. respect or I'm going to kick your black ass. Listen, I was saying on the drive down here, when, the, when somebody adds the black, 
Like was like that's when you know they yeah. mean business. Uh-huh. Like, hey man, I will kick your ass. It's like, okay, whatever. You might just be talking. <laughs> yeah, whatever. But I will kick your black ass. It's like, oh shit, he's serious now. After <laughs> he's black, easy. <laughs> easy. Hey, that adjective uh-huh. changes the whole sentence. That's the truth. Yeah, I think he means business. Yeah, he means business. Oh man, mm-hmm. lean on me, y'all. Yeah, Morgan Freeman. Mm-hmm. I would say it's one of his best works, and it is. But like, he got so much other, uh, yeah. so much other shit he, he's done. But yeah. that's definitely one of my. This is this. This is a young old Morgan Freeman. Yeah, so a he young was, old. <laughs> he was. Spried. This is up there with Malcolm X for me. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. In terms of just, in, in terms of how I feel about it, you yeah. know what I'm saying the in movie. The, the movie. Yeah. Malcolm X is the pinnacle. Like, it's so it's so much bigger. Yeah, but like when I say like. The the um the feeling I get after watching um Lean on Me is the same feeling I get when I watch like a very inspirational film yeah. for us. And you I love this, I love this for the the multiverse. I just saw a tweet like literally before I hopped on a car to co- to come down here. And the tweet basically was like, What what two movies do you think exist in the same universe? Right, mm-hmm. and it's interesting. I can't wait to look at this. So it's almost kind of like could lean on me and Juice exist in the same universe, Ooh. right? Like you know, like could um, you know Steel and and Q and Bishop been the guys that was on stage that was kicked off the stage? Yeah, yeah. you know they went to East Side High uh-huh. and they don't get any of that game, you right. know, because they were already truant and doing all the different things yeah. that they need to do. I like that. That's an interesting Ooh. twist, right? Like, you know. East Side High, Lean On Me and Juice mm-hmm. be the same film. I mean, Lean On Me and New same Jersey world. Drive could be the same movie. For sure. They could be the same universe, yeah. right? Like, yep. you know, these guys, you know, Mr. Clark kicked them out of school. Mm-hmm. So now they just out on the block. Now he got to go get this guy out of jail now. Yep. All right, y'all. Lean On Me, Morgan Freeman. Mm-hmm. It's the end of the episode, man. Thank y'all for checking it out. Please go check this film out. It's a feel good film. It's a it's hard to watch some, a little bit because it's mm-hmm. heavy. It deals it deals with some real inner city situations, but it's ultimately feel good. Ultimately feel good, yeah. and it's a great ending. Yeah. Um, I want y'all to go watch it, man. Lean on me, mm-hmm. Big Ja, mm-hmm. Black Busters, the best movie podcast, mm-hmm. movie review podcast in the world. World Craig. in the world, Craig. Mm-hmm. I'm Big Ja. Uh. Cold tone, cold tone. Get those shins off the doors. Anybody's cold here. tone, <laughs> cold tone. Watch the movie and you understand what you're yeah, talking about. Perfect. Cold tone, cold, cold tone. tone. Get these chains off the off the doors. Enemies the enemy is here. here. Yeah. Boom. Hey man, we out of here, man. Love life. Be good or be good at it. I'm out. Pew to the max. Blackbusters.